Hello everyone and welcome back to Mossy Pine Ranch at Elm Creek. We have reached episode number 33 and are now in June. Just hopped in the case first thing and we've added the wheel weights and wide tyres back. Last time we were busy getting the field to the right of me turned over, field 4, 5, 6 and 7. It had grass in it which we mowed and we forage wagoned that into the fermenting silo. That made some silage throughout the day and overnight and we did a late night silage run last night which uh, has trickled in the funds as you will see. Also last time we cultivated and planted that same field using our new IMT tractor which we swapped for the lizard one which was its predecessor. Yep, um, that was all quite smooth apart from a little bit of funkiness with the cultivator but we soon overcame that challenge. Today, as you can probably see, it's onto this field and making some hay. Yeah, that's right, we are all out of hay on the ranch, so we need to make the next season's worth of hay. The last hay that we had did last a very long time. We made it right at the start of uh, Mossy Pine Ranch, and we used the old Massey conventional baler and uh, bale stacker, if you remember to make those mini bales. Yeah, but this time the ranch has moved on, so we're gonna make some full-sized bales. But it all starts with me getting this all mown up. I've got it all open, not swathing, so we can come along and ted it and then windrow it later. And also, I'm going to go and mow field number one, the grass meadow, because that also needs mowing. But I am gonna swath that because the plan is that grass is going to be put towards yet more fermentation to make silage. And then, yeah, once I've done the headland of that, we'll probably leave a worker to do the rest so we can get on with the tedding and the windrowing. But yeah, you better leave this with me. The horses and the sheep are crying out for more hay, so we've got to get it done. I'll see you soon. There we go. We have mown upfield number two and three in a nice open um, state. So yet yeah, the grass is all left across, strewn across the uh, ground so we can come along and tend it. And we've also done the headland of this field, but swathed it so we can come along and forage, wagon it later. Now I left the helper to do the rest. Hopefully uh, John is up to the task. He's done some very fiddly work with the cultivating before, missing patches and all sorts. But we will entrust that he can do that, all right? So next it's on to getting all this lovely grass tedded up to make some hay. So we're gonna jump in the old deer, John Deer for that. And uh, the tedder's behind the windrow, so we need to get that out first. Yep, the John Deer is capable of running the Tedder and the Windrow, so that's pretty good. And we don't get to use the John Deere for too many jobs, so it'd be quite nice using it in uh, this context. So let's uh, just grab the Tedder first. And just drop the Windrow there for the time being. And in we go to get the Tedder. Now this tether has not been used since that first time we did hay. And uh, yeah, that goes to show how long the hay has lasted that we got all stocked up. 
it's served our horses and sheep well but we've increased the number of horses and we've increased the number of sheep so yeah we really need to get on the hay production and now we've got a bigger field to to mow I think actually we mowed field one when we first extended it and made hay out of it so goes to show what's uh, what's happened on the ranch since then let's spin this into action and we can lower away to get tedding so I'm gonna get this all spun up and I'll see you when we're done all tedded up that was pretty fun made a bit of a mess and I hope I didn't catch too much uh, gravel when I was going close to the field boundary but let's uh, stash the tedder away and then it's straight on to the windrowing I think I've seen that the helper John is making some good progress on the uh, field number one and the meadow so yeah the hope is that he is done by the time we've finished windrowing and that way we've then got the case back to do the baling and yeah I am going to probably do bales we could of course use the forage wagon to collect the hay and we can stash that in our fermenting silo as well just as sort of uh, raw hay but yep yeah, we are going to do bales because I think bales seems to work best for for animals really when uh, when handling and getting the the right amount to the animals bales just sometimes are easy to pick up and uh, deposit in the feeding spot and also bales allow you to yeah, keep some in the feeding area so it can extend the length of time um, that you need or that you have where you don't need to feed them but yeah we are getting the windrow in here if I don't catch the gate on my way in it's a bit tight up here but quite like going through this top section it's quite nice got a bit of character with the fence yeah I keep hitting it so that's not great there we go that's us clear so we can get this unfolded and just start over here for windrowing we will do the headland first and then we'll break into some form of rows we might even do a couple of headlands see how we get on yeah I want to be catching all of this stuff at the edge but hopefully as little gravel as possible so onwards to the next job let's get this all lined up so we can then come along and bail it see you soon
Now, if I do say so myself, for an awkwardly shaped field, I don't think we've done too bad a job. It's a little bit awkward in those uh, windy bits. It's not a you know, nice rounded field. It does have all its curves and thin bits and thicker bits. So yeah, I don't think we've done too bad a job there. And uh, I've tried to make it as easy as possible for the baler when it comes along to try and keep things continuous and running. But there are a couple of little strips that just uh, were the fillers in between the bigger sections. Yeah, time to get the windrower parked away and we can check in on the helper, see how he's done with the mowing. I'm expecting some mist bits. Right, we'll leave the old deer there. We'll be needing it later to lift some of the bales. Let's go and check in on our helper. Not quite sure why John left it there, right next to the tree. I can only imagine he got stuck and ran off scared like he did before with the cultivating. Yep, there's a mist patch up here, so let's just get this scene to. It's actually a smaller patch than what was missed last time, so maybe the helper is improving on this field. And a wee patch here, which, uh, yeah, again, was left last time. But I think, yet again, it's uh, slightly smaller than what was left. So that is an improvement. Just uh, doing a quick scout over the hill and nothing else missed. So yeah, helper's not done a bad job at all. Nice one, John. Let's get these mowers washed up and parked away and we'll trade them for the baler. These mowers do get filthy dirty working in the field. That's nice and clean. Alright, that's the mower dropped off and we can just flip back this way to grab the crone big pack baler. Now, I could have maybe got away with running this on the John Deere. I think it takes about 115 horsepower, but probably better for efficiency letting the case run it. And yep, yeah, there's our new sprayer, which we bought last time as well. And I'm thinking that the sorghum is probably going to be needing uh, weeding and fertilizing. So yep, yeah, spraying of herbicide and spraying of fertilizer to get it up to its secondary level and to get rid of those pesky weeds so we'll probably see to that later on in the day but it's looking nice and luscious and green the sorghum and that's going to be the feed for our chickens and horses in the next season all right i don't quite know why but i'm starting down this end and we'll get it unfolded it's got a little bit of straw left in it but that's okay it will get replaced by hay or uh, yeah, once we've filled it up we can uh, then just switch to hay but yeah I think it's switched from straw to hay so that's pretty good brilliant so I think we've got the largest capacity bale set from when we did the straw in field number 10 and that's going to keep our bales nice and efficient they will be a bit bigger and heavier but they'll carry more litres but yeah, that's all good. So let's get all this hay baled up. And then we'll be getting a nice bale spike for the John Deere. So we can get all the bales lifted and put in the shed, which is conveniently over there. And I'm now have to cross across cross across move across to the next headland as that's the outer part so yeah leave this with me and i'll see you when we're all bailed up
Right, there we go, that's the baling all done. So we can plop out the last one that was there. And I think that is bale number 12. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve by my count. So yeah, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, we had 79% in the baler so very close to having another one but uh, never mind because that would have made it unlucky 13. So we'll just uh, take the baler back give it a wash as well because probably going to be a little while before we next use it and then uh, we can get on to stashing away our bales and we should have enough space in that uh, little brown shed for all of our bales and of course we need to give some to our horses and sheep and we'll probably stash a bale in each feeding point as well to make it nice and easy great bale of this chrome big pack i'm a big fan of it all right that's parked away so next it's hopping in the john deere and getting to the dealership to go get a bale spike Right at the dealership, so let's get a suitable bale spike. So I don't have too many mods installed, but I am going to just go for the simplest bale spike, the Albert, but it is one mod that has the tension belts in case we need it. Ah, and great, we can change the colour to a lovely John Deere green. Okay, so the frame stays black, but we can change the spikes to green. Right, that's picked up. So let's get back to the ranch and yeah, we can get picking up some bales. Bit of a slow drive back to the ranch in this John Deere, only doing 20 mile an hour. Right, back at the ranch and the first thing we need is the weight to be able to pick up some of these bales. So plan is I'm going to stack them all in the shed, but I will also be putting a bale or two near each uh, feeding point so probably best we start off with these ones over here just go into these horse paddocks so let's get nicely lined up and use the old front loader to give these a lift there we go just needed a bit of a jabbing there to get going yeah I'm only going to put them near the feeding area because if you put them on the feeding area, it can then uh, feed the horses too much when they need a combination of oats and hay. And you don't want to fill it all up with hay because then they won't be 100% productive. And there we go, that's the first one placed. And now it's just rinse and repeat. So I'm going to get this all stacked up and tidied away. And I'll see you in a short while. Bale moving is stress inducing, but uh, yeah, only had a few that we needed to move. There was eight in the shed, 
and then I think a further four around the paddock so we've got one in the top horse paddock one for the sheep and yeah the sheep can just have their hay right in the feed trough because hay is all they take and then the two open pastures down the bottom have uh, got one apiece which is good but uh, yeah we just need to drop the bale fork off and that's us all mowed, tedded, windrowed, uh, hay baled and now stashed away so um, I'm hoping that the animals are going to have enough hay to see them through for a good couple of seasons oh that's the weight, we don't want to drop that but yep, yeah, the grass fields that we've got we've got two permanent grass fields, field one which is the meadow and also uh, field two and three which are going to be our permanent grass fields so when they're not serving silage they can be used for making hay and there will be another growth this year no doubt for a chance for us to mow so yeah I'm not worried we should have plenty of capacity to make hay as and when we need to so that is super yeah, didn't quite fill the shed as much as I did last time, but that's okay. These are high capacity bales with 8,000 litres in each, so that is very good. Back in the case, and next job, as promised, is spraying. So we need to herbicide to clear the weeds in the field 4, 5, 6 and 7, which we planted with sorghum last time. And yet yeah, we'll pick up the spray tank and the sprayer and this has got 28 meters working width so we should get through that field nice and easy with both herbiciding and fertilizing now, i did uh, both jobs at the same time last time we did herbiciding and then straight after we did the fertilizing i'm not sure if that is the done thing and if you can spray that sort of close proximity but nonetheless the game allows us to do it so we will crack on and I think we will yet yeah, do herbicide first again like we did last time. Switched back to narrow tyres for this one and yet yeah, we filled up with some of the leftover herbicide we had last time and trimmed it off to 100% from our huts that give us the fertiliser and herbicide but let's get unfolded and we'll head off in this direction whilst that is unfolding just take a quick look at the map yep this field has sorghum in it's in very early growth and it needs its secondary level of fertilizing but if we look at weeds yeah we see that it's got very early onset of weeds so we need to get that seen to sooner rather than later okay we've got a bit of extra width so let's make sure we utilize it and we can switch on and safely drive through our field with our narrow tires and get our sorghum all nice and weed free so yeah I'm gonna do the herbiciding and then I'm gonna get straight on to the fertilizing and I'll see you when we've done both
building up. And I think that's full coverage. We'll just uh, move off the field and take a quick look at the map, make sure we've got everything covered. So yeah, we've nicely got all the weeds covered, so that's nice. They are brown, which means they've been killed, destroyed. And, ah, oh, fertilising. We missed a very thin strip up here. You can never get it perfect. It's so hard to see when uh, you haven't really got much of a visual change in the texture. But yeah, I'm not going to waste the fertiliser to just do that tiny little strip. I think that's going to be pretty negligible in the yield of the field so never mind but yeah let's get the sprayer parked up actually it probably needs a wash since uh, it's work last session and also today and we can drop off the spare bits of fertilizer that we have and give the case a much deserved spray wash whilst we're here right that's the sprayer dropped off and yet yeah, we can also park up the case as the last job for today really is probably taking another load of silage to the BGA. So yep, yeah, it's been busy processing whilst we've been doing today's jobs and we're up to 93,000 litres. So enough to take the Mack truck and trailer to do a load. But it's all jobs that you've seen before, so I'm just going to get this done. And also another job that you've seen plenty of times before is me forage wagoning the grass meadow. Of course that job needs to be done, so yeah I'm going to get that done before next time. And that's just going to get added to our fermenting silo along with what we've got here. Uh, quite a lot left to process, another 430 odd thousand and we're about to take another 80,000 uh, to the BGA to process. So yeah, we are really going to be coming into some money at the end of uh, all of this grass to silage work, which is fantastic. In terms of next time, I think we are probably going to see what jobs we've got between uh, now and harvest time, harvest of our sorghum and harvest of our sunflowers and yeah we've got big plans for that the sunflower is going to be taken to the oil mill to make uh, sunflower oil which yeah fetches a pretty price from what I checked and or the sorghum is going to go towards our animals and keep them nice and fed we've got plenty of eggs and yeah we've got um, quite a bit of uh, wool so we'll be taking some wool to the spinnery at some stage and also I think the horses are getting near and close to reproducing again so we really are growing on this ranch which is fantastic but I am going to take this load of silage to the BGA so we'll call it there hope you have enjoyed watching if you have, please remember to drop a like, and if you've got any tips, tricks, or things you'd like me to do, then feel free to leave a comment. But all that's left to say is, hope to see you again next time, and until then, catch you later. Cheers all. Bye bye.